What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we're doing the carry a manor guide. Probably an important one. There's definitely a side quest over here that you're going to want to be able to uh, obtain in a way. It's going to give you a couple of different uh, objectives and things to unlock around the map and there's more than a few things inside of here that could be useful to you. And if you're not sure where the location is, you'll just have to head north from the Rhea Lucaria all the way up until you hit this point at the road to the manor. You'll know you're there if you on the left side of the road. It's going to be a blacksmith named Ija. This guy's going to be very important for your gameplay going forward. Essentially what he's going to be able to do is upgrade your weapon from, I believe, 5 was the last point you could stop at with upgrading your weapon in the very starting area. He'll be able to carry you over all the way up until 10 for any weapon that you have or shield. But on that note, let's get straight into the carry of manor guide. Now after we finish talking with Ija, we'll jump on our horseback and head off to the left from him. Now you'll notice there's going to be a magical trap near the manor. You'll need to avoid that as we're going closer to the manor, but as we're going to this left portion, should be fairly easy to avoid. I think it's just out of range of its attacks. It's just being triggered. But up here on the left, we're going to find a cemetery full of those gold runes. Now there'll be a couple of rats in here, but you should make quick work of them. But you can never do with too many of those gold runes. Could come in handy for any of those moments. You may need that little bit of extra just to level up at a lost grace or for something you need to buy from a merchant. Now just after that, we'll head back to EG and start heading up along the right path going straight towards the manor. Do avoid the fire of that magical missile trap. Don't know how much damage it deals. Didn't get hit by it. Fairly easy to avoid it, but could be uh, pretty detrimental to you if it did hit you. Now, once we get straight up to the manor, there'll be a lost grace right outside the entrance. And once we get in, we'll be heading directly to the right. Now, inside here, you'll notice there is a very interesting enemy type that is quite irritating. More specifically, the big hand, to be specific. That hand is a bit of a nightmare. Best way to deal with it is to wait for it to do its little finger blast move, where it shoots out that little sleeping spell. If you do get hit by it, ooh, it's going to be a, a detrimental one for you, but as soon as they fire that off you should be able to run up get a good a couple of hits in right there and finish them off quickly now just along the right path over on the left we'll have a crafting material on that body and along this right wall we'll come up on some stairs and a room inside of here one enemy inside of this room and we'll be able to get another cookbook out of this uh, body right here directly outside of that we'll head to the right go up the stairs and there's going to be two enemies up here both of them are going to be the, the magical projectile type but from that point, we'll keep going right. There'll be a magical trap over here for a missile. Easy to avoid, but there's going to be a somber smithing stone over there. Now we'll head back to where that other enemy was on our left, and then be able to jump down over here. There's going to be another big hand with a couple of small hands, but you should be able to jump in and take it out fairly quickly. Do focus on the big hand first. Now from that point, we'll be going along that right wall, and on the left, you'll notice we've got another one of those scarabs, giving us another one of those magical abilities. Then we'll kind of double back, and on top of this rock over here, we'll find a shield. Don't know how good this shield is, but for any of those shield wielders out there, it could be nice. Now we'll just head back to the Lost Grace checkpoint. We'll spawn back there, and now we're going to go for the center fountain over here. And there's going to be two big hands laying on top of these columns. As soon as we come up to it, both of them are going to be triggered. You can't trigger one at a time, so going to be one of those moments. Deal with one of them as quick as possible, but... And then you should be able to deal with the other one fairly quickly, but at that same time, you don't want to have both of them on you. So as soon as one drops, focus in on it. But that smithing stone over there at the fountain will just turn around and go towards the left side. Once we get into this left side, you'll notice there's a couple of buried hands with this guy that tried to uh, make sure that we could avoid any of these trap moments as much as possible. But you can summon in this area, and the best way to kind of trigger that hand from not grabbing you, is to get up behind it and let your summons come in over it. That way you can trigger it. Fairly easy at that point. Did also forget to mention that when you do kill some of these big hands or small hands, they will drop some loot, and generally it is going to be a somber smithing stones too. So do loot them every time you kill them. But from this point, we're going to keep heading along that left wall. Would be a good idea to pop out one of those lanterns on your hip. That way you can see those fingertips out of the ground a lot easier. There will be some buried small hands out there as well, but there's only two along this path that I know of. Or at least that I came across. You know, you'll notice we've got another big hand hanging on this wall over here, or 
over this archway and there's going to be another small hand buried in the ground under here you're going to need to trigger that small hand then the big hand will drop down focus on the big hand first immediately take that down that way you don't have those problems with that but from that point we'll keep going along this lift wall until we hit this rock over here we'll jump up on top of it take down this small hand and over to our right it's going to be another one of those bodies with crafting material on it i believe it's a uh, gemstone or glint stone bud something for crafting in general but from this point like i said there's going to be more than a few of those buried uh, hands over here but we'll head over to the right and get on the main walkway above us on this archway is going to be another one of those small hands that drops down but from this we'll just keep going all the way up until we hit this small hand and the big hand over there now we'll be able to stealth kill that small hand on the right but every time i tried going in stealth here and trying to avoid that big hand i i'd, I'd kill this small hand and then immediately it, it grabbed the attention of that big hand so you're gonna have to deal with it either way but you should be able to make quick work of it hanging behind that uh, stairway. Now from that point, we'll head up the stairs. In this room will just be a ghost, nothing of value to us. So we'll head up the stairs and get to our next Lost Grace checkpoint. Now just behind that, next to the stairs on this altar, is going to be another one of those smithing stones. So you'll want to grab that up. And then we'll be heading out into these walkways. Now on these walkways, we'll have some spectral enemies start to spawn. There'll be two in front of us on the first walkway and then another two at the uh, conjunction point. Now from this point, we'll be heading over to the left. And as soon as we get down to this portion, we'll head over to the right and we'll go all the way down this. And at the end of this is going to be a rune arc. We'll have an enemy spawn right behind us as well. And then as soon as we start to walk away, away from this conjunction point there'll be two more right behind us we'll need to take those off because we're about to jump over the right ledge over here after you take those out we'll start to head back and then over here on the right is the rooftop we're going to want to jump down to we're going to have a legendary item down here it's going to be one of those that's uh, good for mages or anybody that has intellect or faith up don't know how many of those uh, mages are doing the melee Hybrid builds could be could be something that it's worthwhile for. I don't know how much damage it's actually going to be dealing by the time you upgrade it, but it does have magic and fire damage on it. Good lord. Sorry about this, guys. I thought I edited out all the uh, latter moments, but I guess one of them had to stick in. But that's going to be our legendary weapon right there. Dealing a little magic and fire damage right there for anybody with that intellect or faith. Now from that point, we, we want to spawn back at that Lost Grace checkpoint. And this time along the walkway, we're just going to go straight forward. Now on this second walkway, we're going to have one enemy spawn. We'll take that one down. Then another one will spawn in front of us. As soon as that one does, there's going to be another one behind us. You want to take the one behind you out before you go charging in for the next one. But as soon as we kill that one that's all the way in front of us, we'll have another two spawn behind us. So be wary of that. Then we'll just charge the last guy. Now from this point... Over on the right side of this conjunction point, you'll see a point where we could drop down. Do not drop down just yet. Trust me, we're going to want to continue along this walking path, go up these stairs and get onto this lift, go up, and then we'll be able to grab one of those Lost Grace checkpoints and then just turn around, take the lift back down. And that way we don't have to go through all of that mess again where we went along that walkway. Sometimes those spectral enemies can be quite frustrating. But as soon as we get to that right portion, we'll jump down onto this wood plank over here. Grab that loot over from the right. And on the left, we'll immediately go down and then turn around. Underneath the stairs is going to be another one of those gold runes. Then we'll just head back up the stairs. Keep going straight. And on our left is going to be three hands, I believe. And there's going to be another item behind them. We'll take out those hands fairly quickly. And we'll actually have a sword whip, which is pretty interesting. I didn't get to use it, don't have the dexterity for it, but that could be quite interesting for some of those builds out there. From that point, we'll head off to the left. We'll have another one of those robot creatures. Should be able to take it out fairly easy. And then immediately, we'll be able to get that somber smithing stone just after that. Now we'll head back to that Lost Grace checkpoint. From this point, we're going to have a couple of wolves out here. I believe only three out in this area but you want to head off to the left first we want to get that golden seed first you can actually sneak past these guys the only thing you're going to want to grab out here is that golden seed but from that point we'll be able to head out over in this direction and then uh, there is one more thing to grab over here but you can stealth grab it 
it's going to be another one of those crafting materials, but then just turn around, jump up on top of this uh, patio, I suppose. And then from this point, we're going to have a couple of bigger enemies in front of us, or just one. We'll want to jump off to the left of that doorway before that, and then get up on top of here. There'll be a mage over here, and over on the right before we head up those stairs is going to be another... Is it a Sombra Smithing Stone? No, it's another consumable that we'll grab up there. Then we'll head up the stairs and we'll have one enemy up here. Now for any of those uh, magic sorcerers or ranged people, this is going to be your perfect spot to deal with this guy over here. Now if you just don't want to deal with this guy and you just want to keep progressing forward, you could also just kind of sneak along this left ledge over here. you notice I pulled out my uh, hand hydralisk. I'll have a guide on where to find that later on as well, but I couldn't use it at the time. Don't worry, guys. Okay, I should have edited this a bit better, but this is going to be the portion where we uh, sneak across. You'll only have to deal with one enemy. You won't aggro the big guy, and we'll have some of those uh, crossbow uh, fencing type of guys up here to deal with. You want to go on the right side, but if you do end up, uh, or if you do want to kill the guy, or if you want the loot off of this guy, because there is a piece of loot that he will drop. And if you are melee, you'll want to just charge in immediately, take out the small fries, and then kind of double back out the door. Let your summon aggro the guy, and then just keep dwindling away at him. Now from this guy, we're going to have a colossal uh, magic sword. Don't know how good it can possibly be, but I'm trying to get all the uh, loot inside of this game and just pretty much hoard it all. I just like looking at it all. Feels great for me. But if you do take him down, you will be granted that colossal sword that's going to be of the magic sword. You'll need a bit of intellect in order to wield it, but with some of those helmets you may have found at Rhea Lucaria, you should be able to wield it. Now, once we get up to that middle portion with the two sets of stairs, you want to go up the right set of stairs. That way we only have to deal with one of those enemy types with the crossbow and the, the uh, rapier, I believe. But from this point, we'll avoid the door on our right. That's going to be the boss area. And we'll want to head out to the left over here through this uh, doorway right here. And we'll need to drop down here for a bit of secrets in this area. Now, do, do really uh, be mindful of this jump right here. I believe you want to do a sprinting jump. At this time, I did not realize I could sprint. So I walked up over to the right and then just dropped down from there. But we'll just be dropping down onto these wood flats right here for whatever reason they're doing here. And then we'll drop down, and there's going to be a whole lot of pots down here. Now, all these jars are going to be dancing around, but you should be able to take them out fairly easy. Once you've taken out the jars down here, we'll be heading over to the right over here. Can't remember exactly what the loot is. It's going to be some of those throwing darts, but from this point, we'll head back. We won't jump down just yet. We'll be heading over to the left. We've got another item up on top of this portion on this ledge. It's going to be another one of those crack pots for later for crafting, I believe. Now from this point, we'll be dropping down just over here. Be a, another couple of small pots, and then we'll be dropping down yet again. Now over in this portion, we're going to have two of the larger pots and more than a few of the smaller pots. You do want to focus on the smaller pots first. That way you don't have any... Uh, problems with possibly getting staggered by some of the small ones while dealing with the two larger ones because there's no way to aggro one at a time. You're going to aggro both of the large pots and if you know them like I do, they're going to be doing that uh, Disco Inferno where it's it's only two moves. It's a uh, 100% spin and flop. But after you take those guys down, we'll head over to the right corner over here and we're going to have another one of those smithing stones. From this point, we'll be able to just double back and then we'll be jumping down yet again, and we'll be going for the last piece of loot from this portion. Now, sadly enough, once we get to this last piece of loot, we will have to go back to the Lost Grays and then uh, go through the big guy again and the uh, little guy. But from that point, it'll be fairly easily, or fairly easy since you know how to sneak past them. But once we get up there, we'll have this doorway in front of us. Now, lucky enough for this boss fight we have in front of us, we will have that, uh, I can't believe that's it's that type of checkpoint outside of dungeons, just outside the door. Now, this guy is fairly irritating in my opinion. He has a lot of magical moves, and obviously he's on horseback, so he has a good bit of movement. But lucky enough, we can summon in this area. 
I did have the skeleton summon and definitely didn't have all that much damage to my weapon at the if I went in there at the level I'm at now I would have just creamed this guy but he's got a lot of easy moves if you'll notice he'll just shoot off a lot of these uh, different uh, God, what am I saying a lot of these different magic uh, abilities if you can just keep aggroing him keep getting in his face and just avoid those swings every time that he lands them and just let him aggro on top of that uh on top of your uh, summon you should be able to take or make quick work of him essentially so he will do just about the same move now if you do let him uh, go for a bit longer if you don't keep going straight into his face he can get a bit more aggro later on he'll have a bit more to his tricks and a bit more of those spells so you really want to make sure that you kind of get in his face get that damage in quickly and just dwindle him as fast as possible but from that point, we'll grab up to Lost Grace in that moment. Then we'll be able to head out to the right. And this is where we're going to get into the Three Sisters area. It's going to be three towers out here. And one of them is going to have the Lady Ronnie in them. Now from this point, once we walk out, we're going to head over to the right. Over here, we're going to have uh, Evergalo and a couple of other items over here. And a little mini boss, if you will. But as soon as we head along the right path, we'll kind of get over until we're onto this middle portion road you could just take the path but from my footage I, I did some kind of wonky style but in that middle path we'll have one of those scarabs and we'll get another one of those magical abilities now going further down once we get down to this portion we're going to have another one of those lost grace that we'll grab up from here we'll kind of head out and we'll keep going straight goodness my editing but we'll head over to the right. There's going to be another one of these summons that we'll be able to grab up over here on the right. And as we uh, take our time here. Sorry about this, guys. Tried my best with this editing, but sometimes, you know, I want to make it as clear as possible which, which uh, direction we're going, but not try to take up as much time as possible. But from this point over on the right side, near the ledge, we're going to find one of those frog-type guys. And the body underneath him is going to have the frog, I guess a dual frog summon. But from this portion, we'll take out those frog guys, and then we'll kind of head to the middle area over here. You'll notice this stone pillar right here. We'll get up on top of this and then jump off of that, and we'll kind of keep going off to the northeast from this in a way. We'll take out a couple of those uh, wolves down here, and just over here we're going to have an Evergalo boss. He is very easy, trust me, he's nothing to it. Uh, I'll let you just get the surprise of who it is, trust me, as soon as you see him it's going to be nothing, but you will get a meteorite spell from this guy, so just letting you know it is kind of worth your while, especially if you're a sorcerer. But from this point we'll head out from that uh, boss fight, and over to our left is going to be another one of those fire foxes. Very easy to kill, but at the same time, we're not going to get anything out of this guy other than runes. Just thought I'd let you know. After that, we'll head back to the Lost Grace that we just grabbed, and we'll start heading back towards those three towers over there in the Three Sisters area. Essentially, we're going to be going for that middle tower, and once we get to the middle tower, we're going to be ending up facing against one of those uh, Glintstone Dragons again. Now, it is a bit irritating a fight inside of this type of area. We've got a lot of clutter over here. It can be uh, a bit hard to do on horseback as well. There's a lot of obstacles to kind of dance around, especially with any time you get hit by the flames of this thing. You know, it's immediately going to kill you. Very frustrating. Could be a different, uh, I believe it's a Glenstone Dragon, yes. But for whatever reason, I'm not exactly sure what happened. I started fighting this dragon, and as soon as I got it to half health, out of nowhere, it just disappeared. I didn't even get a dragon heart. I couldn't find the dragon. I don't even know what happened. I mean, I, I got him down on the ground, and then you can, as you can see, he just disappears. I've had this happen to another dragon as well in a different area. I don't know if this is a bug or what's going on. You know, Let me know down in the comments if you've had this issue before as well. But from this point, we'll just head back up into that middle tower. And we're going to meet up with uh, Lady Ronnie. Now as soon as we get in here, there's a couple of things that we'll need to get done. Essentially, once we get up to the top, we're going to be talking with Ronnie. You will want to accept her offer. That way you can start the quest line. And if you need to know uh, what to do after that... 
Uh, I'll give you the details because we'll need it for this portion right here. But at the same time, if you're looking to continue this side quest line, check out my video on uh, the Nocturnal Eternal or Nocron Eternal City. That's going to be your route on what you need to grab for Lady Ronnie in the side quest line. But as soon as we talk to her, we're going to need to talk to three different people down below. Now, there also is a Lost Grace checkpoint. Was talking a bit before that, but there is one in the middle here. That way you'll be able be able to constantly come back to, but you'll essentially need to talk to three ghost ghost forms of some of these characters, which is E.G., uh, Blade, I believe, the Wolfman, and then this uh, very irritating sorcerer guy as well. Now, once you do uh, talk to these three people, you won't, you want to go back up to talk to Lady Ronnie for whatever reason. You can't teleport out of here until you talk to her again. But as soon as we, we're done talking with her, We'll be able to walk outside and we're going to essentially go for the right tower or the tower on our right essentially over here we're going to grab up a couple of items it's going to be the last little roundabout that we'll have from this uh, area but as soon as we jump down here there's also a side quest that you'll get from this sorcerer guy over here now i will be doing a guide on that side quest later on i still haven't even done this uh, side quest myself just yet but We'll be having that up as content later on. But as soon as we're done talking to this guy, we'll head up the ladder and we'll go all the way to the top of this tower. We'll have another item to grab up from this location. I believe another memory stone giving us more slots for our spells if you're a sorcerer. Now, as soon as we walk outside of his tower on the right, there's a little like broken down wall. You'll want to like jump up on top of that. We've got a nifty little uh, helmet over here. I know a couple of people down in the comments have asked about... Uh, what type of helmet I was wearing in the previous video. This is going to be the Black Wolfman helmet. This is essentially just uh, pretty much a lookalike to the Wolfman Blade, I believe himself, I believe his name is. But as soon as we grab that up, we'll just head right on out, and over to our right is going to be a secret vendor. We'll want to jump down over here. Goodness, sometimes my footage is uh, a bit lackluster. But needless to say, as soon as we get over to seeing this rooftop, we'll just jump on down. And as soon as we get all the way down on top of the rooftop, it will kick us off of the horse. It becomes one of those only walkable areas, but you'll notice the wood platforms that we'll need to jump down onto. Now, as soon as we do get down here, you'll want to head over to the roof before dropping down this ladder that we have in front of us. There is one piece of loot over on top of the left side of this uh, rooftop. Can't exactly remember what it was. Uh, it's coming up. It's coming up. We've got another fang, I believe, just crafting material. But as soon as we go down this ladder, we'll have this secret vendor. He'll have a bit of a communication with us. But one thing that's special that he does sell, sell is Celestial Dew. He has a couple of other items and some cr cookbooks. So, Or also the uh, larval tier could be beneficial. But the Celestial Dew, if you ever kill any of those NPCs, just take it back to the Church of Vows. It's going to absolve you of all your sins, respawn that NPC. But right after that, we'll go back to the location where we just about dropped off on that uh, on that rooftop. And over to the right, inside of a rune, is going to be the last item, which is going to be another one of those scarabs. And it's going to be another of those magical abilities. Now, guys, that's going to be the Caria Manor guide right there that's going to be everything now on the right side there is a third tower that you cannot unlock just yet but as soon as you do complete the ronnie's quest line that will unlock once you go to the nakron eternal city grab the item for her and then bring it back to her that will be open and you will be able to loot it there is a couple of items in there forgot to add the footage on that one on what those items are but there is also a teleporter inside of there that i suggest you do not use until you're you have the Elden Ring itself that is going to be one of those in-game locations that comes out of this side quest and I'll also show you what to do with the item that uh, Lady Ronnie gives you at the end of the quest line once you give her the Nocron Eternal City item at the end of my Nocron Eternal City guide good lord that's a mouthful right there guys but hope you enjoyed this if you enjoyed this content you want to see more of this live hit that link down in the description follow me over at twitch i'm streaming daily pretty much going to be on elden ring up until the 25th for uh, tiny teeny's wonderland but we'll have plenty of content like this coming as well so if you'd like to see more of this hit that subscribe button and 
Hope you enjoyed this and have a good one.